I just took the very first all-electric Volvo, the XC40 Recharge P8, out on the little date. And as you know, here on E4 Electric, this is how I do my reviews. Because if you think about it, shopping for an electric car is pretty much no different than dating. It starts with a physical attraction and ends with you signing your money away. So let me tell you all about my date with the all-electric Volvo and you can play along as well to see if we can make a love connection and we're gonna start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the exciting world of electric cars, well, you came to the right place. Click on the matching subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Why are Match.com and Tinder are so popular? I mean, besides the fact that we've been sitting at home for almost a year, but it's also because, let's be honest, the first attraction is usually physical. And the XC40 Recharge is a good-looking compact SUV. It is very cute. It features dual colors. So the roof is always black, and then you have a bunch of choices for the body color. Now, the custom color that Volvo has for the Recharge is kind of disappointing. It reminds me of that one time when my cat got sick. So, not a big fan. It's got the world's smallest frunk. It's big enough for maybe a sandwich and a juice box. So it's kind of like a lunch box under the hood, but it's better than nothing. And I'm talking to you, Volkswagen ID4. It's got two choices for the wheels, 19 and 20 inches. And the interior is a conservative luxury as expected from Volvo. Once you know you are intrigued, it's all about the chemistry. Hey girl, I got my eye on you. If you got this joke, you're definitely my target audience. So let's talk about the chemistry. It's got a 78 kilowatt hour battery with 75 kilowatt hour usable, which means it has less than 4% of a buffer. The battery cells come from LG Chem and CATL. The charging rate for the DC fast charging maxes out at 150 kilowatts, which means you can charge it to 80% in about 40 minutes and for the level 2 home charging it charges at the maximum rate of 11 kilowatts however the almost 80 kilowatt hour battery translates into the disappointing 208 epa miles which only makes the name recharge a little more ironic it's almost like it was named after its biggest disappointment communication is the key to almost any relationship and that's why i have learned the key phrases like you're right Yes, honey, and uh, uh huh. When it came to the XC40 Recharge, the communication was a bit of a struggle because, as most cars, it communicates through the screen, and this one was so tiny just nine inches, so small. I really thought maybe that was a charging pad for my phone. As a matter of fact, it may just be as big as the instrument panel, the screen behind the steering wheel. The tiny screen and its interface is powered by the Android Automotive OS, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And just like with the Polestar 2, it has almost no apps. Now, Google had years to figure this out, and unfortunately, the outcome, at least for now, is very disappointing. Now, the voice commands are actually not that bad. It was able to recognize a few car-related commands, which is a great start. Hey, Google, navigate to the nearest Electrify America station. Sure, Electrify America charging station. Head west on G Street toward 4th Street. Turn on the seat heater for the passenger. Okay, turning on the seat heater for the front passenger. Hey, Google. What's the charge of my battery? Your battery is at 77%. To address the car, all you have to say is, OK, Google. But the problem is, if you have an Android phone yourself or someone else does in your car, they start talking over each other. Hey, Google, set the temperature to 76 degrees. Sure, changing the temperature to 76 degrees. As a matter of fact, let me know in the comment section if watching this video actually triggered your Android phone. And if it didn't, hey, Google. You can also control smart home Google devices, which is pretty cool. And of course, it has a Volvo on call app where you can cool or preheat your cabin and even preheat the seats 
and the steering wheel ahead of time. Speaking of good communication, this is the part of the video where I communicate to you that this video and this channel is sponsored by Xpeng Motors, China's leading smart EV automaker that just announced its expansion plan for Europe and its first deliveries have already started. For more, follow Xpeng Motors on Facebook using the link in the description of this video. And by Neo Charge, guess what? The 220 outlet that powers your dryer can now be split to also power your electric car with the help of the Neo Charger's smart splitter, which will automatically switch back to your dryer once you're done doing a laundry. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. Despite having some issues in the communication department, this EV did take my breath away, more than I actually thought it would. The XC40 recharge goes 0 to 60 in just 4.7 seconds, which is great, but the initial torque that I felt when flooring the accelerator felt much more powerful, which was impressive. It's got a dual motor, which means it's an all-wheel drive vehicle. It has 402 horsepower and one pedal driving, was also very nice, probably one of the best that I have experienced. When it came to the XC40 recharge, I was excited to put the UNI together. After all, it was one of the first UIs based on the Android Automotive OS, so I was so anxious to see it in action, but there was really not much there once I turned it on. I didn't see too many icons or folders and really didn't have that many features. I, I think my high school calculator had more features. And as I mentioned before, unfortunately, it had very few apps. So that was a big, 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 big disappointment because I was looking forward to that. And I hope they start adding them at a higher rate very, very soon. Now, because the UI was so simple, it was also easy to use, which I guess is an upside. And also they've added a physical home button, which was a big plus. There is no start button, which I absolutely love. I think all cars should be moving towards that, but it's not actually gone. It does remind you that this car is Volvo's conversion project. It looks like one of those old apartments where instead of taking an outlet out, the landlord just decided to paint over it. I wasn't that crazy about the center portion of the instrument panel. I thought more could be done with it and I felt that was a bit of a waste of space there. Also, this vehicle has no head-up display, but playing footsie with it will get you access to its backside. Since me and this particular EV didn't know each other very well, I thought it was important to talk about the protection. When it comes to Volvo, protection and safety is what they are known for. It's still its biggest selling point. From airbags to crumble zones, one thing Volvo has always had a reputation of was of a safe car. I should mention that driver assist features were actually very decent, probably one of the better ones that I have recently experienced, though I had no idea how to turn those on. I still don't. I just pushed a lot of buttons on the steering wheel and finally it magically worked. I know the majority of my viewers are men, so grab your EpiPins if you are allergic to this, but we gotta talk about the commitment. The XC40 Recharge comes with 4 years and 50,000 mile warranty, double that for the battery coverage, which is 8 years and 100,000 miles, 3 years and 36,000 mile free maintenance, and 4 years and no mile limit on the roadside assistance. Unlike many electric cars coming to the market, the Volvo XC40 Recharge does not offer any free or discounted charging rates with Electrify America or any other charging networks, which is kind of disappointing. They do have 300 plus dealerships here in the United States and most of them have service centers. Nothing stings more than finding out on the very first date something about them that you know is going to be a deal breaker, like that their Facebook profile picture is of their cat or when you ask them, hey, what do you do for a living? They say something ridiculous, which is like not a, even a real job, like a YouTuber. And I have to say that the XC40 Recharge may have a few of its own. And we will start with a tiny nine inch screen. I have to say, this is one of the smallest ones that I've seen, especially on the new car, especially it's disappointing because it's powered by the Android Automotive OS, which has so much potential. So this is something that may turn people off. Now, the second one, of course, is the range. Now, I've always said that anything over 200 miles should be good enough for most buyers, and it is still true. But given how big the battery is, 208 miles is definitely disappointing. 
And the biggest disappointment, of course, is the price, especially given the range that we just talked about. Even after the most generous incentives, this car will come up to about $45,000. And that is too much of a price for not enough value, especially given what we're expecting next year as far as new electric and gas cars entering the market and that brings us to the next section of course this is not the only compact electric suv coming to the market there are others that are trying to get your attention and possibly lock you in so let's talk about the other suitors the competition the secret admirers now normally the competition would be the gas compact suvs simply because they are the majority of the market share but in this case I don't think the XC40 Recharge can compete with those simply because of the price. As a matter of fact, I don't think it can compete with its own twin sister, the gas version of XC40 that starts just under $35,000. And yes, that entry model does not have as much power as some of the features, but still, I don't think you can justify the hassle of owning an electric car and the gas savings in order to close that price gap and of course we can talk about the tesla model y which has great tech much better range but not as good of a build quality and obviously not as good of a luxury interior however i really do think that these two cars have very different target audiences and of course there are ford mustang mach e volkswagen id4 and other electric vehicles entering the market they are not as luxury but they provide better range some of the other features and are more than $10,000 cheaper. Now, the closest thing to a compact electric luxury SUV that I can think of is the upcoming Audi Q4 e-tron that's coming at the end of the next year. It will be at least $5,000 cheaper and will have a range of around 280 miles. So because of the price and the range, the XC40 Recharge kind of created its own category and I'm not really sure if it's a good thing. And even though the first date is not enough to even trust them to pick a restaurant for the second one, whether or not there will be a second one depends on whether or not you can actually see the future with them, the real relationship, and maybe someday signing on that dotted line to get a certificate that you legally belong to each other. I had a decent first date with the XC40 Recharge. Nobody went to the bathroom and ran out through a window. It is a decent EV, but the price is definitely a tough one to swallow. So I will not be asking XC40 Recharge for a second date. Now, if you are a big Volvo fan who was waiting for an electric version, or you absolutely love the look, or you have a lot of faith in Android bringing more features and apps into the system, well, this car may just be for you. Let me know in the comment section if you made enough of a love connection to take XC40 Recharge out for a date. And if not, I can introduce you to a few other eligible electric vehicles coming to the market next year. Well, I have mentioned the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Volkswagen ID4. I have taken them out on dates as well. So if you want to know how those went, check out the links to those videos in the description of this video. And you can start with the Mustang Mach-E. I put that one also in the corner over there if you're watching me on YouTube. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.